In this video, we're going to talk about single animation states. A single animation state plays a single timeline. So in this case, we have a timeline that moves this red square from the left side to the right. For this animation, the playback is set to one shot, so it'll play once and then stop at the end. You can see that when we go to the state machine, that our timeline one is hooked to the entry state with a transition. You'll also see that the playback icon here corresponds with one shot. Now, if we go back to the timeline and we change the play option to loop, if we go back to the state machine, you'll see that that icon has changed, letting us know that the animation will now loop. If we go back to the timeline once again and change it from loop to ping pong and then return to the state machine, you'll see that the icon there has updated again. Now, anytime we create a timeline or animation, we can use it as a single animation state. So let's go ahead and create a new timeline using the plus button and we'll select timeline. Now we can move this timeline to the bottom of the list. And in this timeline, let's go ahead and animate the blue square. So we'll start by keying the current X position at the beginning and then create a new key at the end. And we'll use our alignment tools to achieve that. Now you can see when we play back the animation, the blue square slides from the left to the right. We can also change the playback type to ping pong so that it matches our other animation. At this point, we have two animations. The first animates the red square and the second animates the blue square. Let's go back to the state machine and go ahead and play the state machine and you'll see that currently our red square is moving. So that means that we're playing timeline one. Now we can change the state that's playing in a few ways. The first way is to select the current state and then go into the animations dropdown list and we can change from timeline one to timeline two. Now you'll see that our state has updated and when we play the state machine back, you'll see that the blue square is now animating. Another way to add a state to the state machine is by dragging and dropping it onto the graph. Since we already have timeline two on there, let's grab timeline one and just drag it and drop it anywhere on the graph. Now you'll notice that it becomes a node. Now just because we have a timeline on the graph doesn't mean we can't use it again. As you can see, we can drag and drop our animations onto the graph as many times as we need them. Now let's go ahead and get rid of these states. So we can marquee select and then hit the delete key on both groups of states there. Now let's add timeline one back. So we'll click and drag it onto the graph and then let's get rid of timeline two. So we can select it, hit the delete key. And now what we need to do is hook the entry state to our timeline one. Now you'll notice that as our mouse cursor gets around the states, we get this little circle up here. That lets us know that if we click and drag, we'll have a transition up here. Now, if we drag this transition onto another state, you'll notice that it snaps there. And when we release, we get this transition that's created. And when we play the state machine again, you'll see that our red square is once again moving. Let's say we wanna make some changes to timeline one. We can double click on the node and that will open up the timeline. The last way to add a state to our state machine graph is by right clicking anywhere on the graph. You'll notice that when we do that, we get this option here and we can simply hit add state. Now note that this is an empty animation state. We don't actually have an animation associated with it. So we'll need to use the inspector and that drop down. And let's go ahead and attach timeline two to it. One very helpful option to know about is the speed setting. If we select one of our states, you'll notice that there's this uh, speed property on our state, and that means we can change the speed at which our animation plays. And by default, it's set to 1x, but if we go to, let's say, 4x, you'll see that the animation plays four times faster. Now we can slow it down and let's say put uh, 0.5x, so now it'll play at half the speed as the normal. We can also put negative values in here if we want the animation to play backwards. 